Good morning friends, it's 8 a.m. in the morning and you are learning your current affairs with me that is Neha. So now let us begin our morning tales for today with this first news that is Ministry of Power mandates all the power distribution companies to maintain a letter of credit that will be routed through banking system. So there are multiple things which we need to discuss here. So first thing is that recently Ministry of Power has mandated all the power distribution companies to maintain a letter of credit. A letter of credit will be a payment security mechanism or basically an assurance of payment to electricity producing companies which are also called GENCOs. So this letter of credit will be regulated under the power purchase agreements and why is this letter of credit implemented or mandated by Ministry of Power? So the purpose behind implementing LOC in the electricity distribution sector is that that it aims to bring regularity in discounts. Regularity in what? Regularity in making the payments to electricity generating companies so basically as we have also discussed in one of our morning tales earlier also that there are two separate things carriage and content in electricity sector so this carriage is the infrastructure and content is the electricity supply so this content that is electricity producing companies that is national load dispatch center and regional load and regional load dispatch centers are the content producing companies basically they produce electricity or we can also say that they dispatch electricity to these distribution companies in order to understand what these distribution companies are we can take the example of tata which distributes electricity in delhi so tata is also a power distribution company but it does not produces electricity electricity is produced by the other company so the content is separate and the carriage is separate and we have also discussed this amendment to electricity act which introduces this separation of carriage and content so now guys the task for you is that you have to mention the year in which this electricity act was enacted and now coming back to our news so the news was that in order to bring regularity in the discount sector and in order to assure the electricity generating companies that they will get the payment in exchange of their electricity supply this new letter of credit mandate has been implemented by the ministry of power so do remember this news because this is a very important news and now let us move on to the first question of today that is how many jobs will india lose due to global warming according to international labor organizations report quite important question it is friends so do do listen to this information very carefully so recently a new report has been released by international labor organization and the report is named as working on a warmer planet the impact of heat stress on labor productivity and decent work so this is the name of the report which has been released by international labor organization recently and this report is very important because this report mentions that india will lose approximately 34 million full-time jobs by the year 2030 due to the global warming. So such a drastic number by which we will be losing our jobs by the year 2030 that too due to the global warming. So according to this report, India will lose 5.8 percent of working hours by the year 2030 so these 5.8 percent of working hours are equivalent to the 34 million full-time jobs what does that mean it means that by the year 2030 the burden of heat stress or basically the global temperature will rise that much that the laborers and the agricultural farmers will not be able to bear the brunt of the heat therefore they have to reduce their working hours and this reduction of their working hours will be the reduction of productivity on an average level and this reduction in productivity is equivalent to 34 million full-time jobs so basically india will suffer the productivity loss of approximately 34 million jobs now the other very important thing that this report mentions is that india had already lost 4.3 percent of its productivity in the year 1995 So that was the previous loss which we have already suffered and this is the projected loss which we are going to suffer in the upcoming future. 
and now on the global level the world is expected to lose approximately 80 million jobs that is 2.2% of the working hours which are equivalent to 80 million jobs so that is the global estimate now other important thing that this report mentions is that the global temperature is expected to rise by 1.5 degrees by the end of 21st century so by taking this into consideration this report has been prepared that by 2030 india might lose 34 million jobs and the overall world is expected to lose 80 million jobs so this was all about this report but it is quite important report from the exam point of view so do remember what this report said about india and about the globe and now let us move on to the next question of today that is which organization has been awarded with world economic forums technical pioneer award so there are five options dreams 11 il blue tokai quantella bounds so out of these five startups it is option d quantella which has been awarded with technical pioneer award by the world economic forum basically what does this quantella do quantella is a digital technology company which offers digital solutions to infrastructures of cities and community and by using its digital platform atlantis it has innovatively provided the solutions to infrastructure so that is the reason behind awarding this organization and now the question for you guys is that who is the ceo of quantella do mention your answers in the comment section below and do follow our current affairs through this morning tail series Now let's move on to the next question that is where will be the India's first international cooperative trade fair be held so basically the keyword here is first india is going to hold its first india international cooperative trade fair in october so now where is this trade fair going to be held so the answer to this question is option a that is delhi in pragati maidan which is a very famous maidan or venue for holding the trade fairs and what is this trade fair aims to do so this trade fair will promote the cooperative to cooperative trade and will showcase india's products from various sectors into a global market so now let us move on to the next question of today that is who has been awarded with the highest honor SJFI medal of sports journalist federation of india basically this SJFI is the abbreviation of sports journalist federation of india so there are five options as we all can see so out of these five options if you guys are familiar with this face then you can recognize the answer also very easily so the answer to this question is option d that is prakash padukone who has been awarded with the highest honor so now friends with which sport is prakash padukone related to this is another very important question emerging out of this information so prakash padukone is related to the sport of badminton now apart from him there are other three important sports personalities also who have been awarded by the sports journalist federation so now let's discuss those awards so SGFI Sports Person of the Year 2019 award has been conferred upon Pankaj Adwani and he is related to billiards and snooker basically he plays both billiards and snooker and he has been in the news for quite a long period of time because of his marvelous achievements so do remember Pankaj Adwani that he has been awarded with this sports person of the year 2019 award by SGFI now other sportsman who has been awarded with this award is bajrang punia who is a wrestler so he has also been awarded with this honor now the second award is emerging talent of the year 2019 so this award has been given to saurabh choudhury who is an ace shooter of india so do remember this thing that saurabh choudhury is related to shooting and he has been given this award now the last award which needs to be discussed here is team of the year 2019 and this award has been conferred upon vidharbha cricket team so remember this thing that vidharbha cricket team has won the sgfi's team of the year 2019 award so that was all about these awards now the question for you guys is that who is the president of sports journalist federation of india so do mention your answers in the comment section below that who is the president of this organization now 
let's discuss the next question of today that is who among the following has been awarded with the honorary doctorate by iit kanpur in recognition of his services to sports so another question related to sports so recently so there are five options pankaj adwani bajrang punia saina nehwal rahul dravid pulela gopichand so out of these five options it is pulela gopichand who has been awarded the honorary doctorate by iit kanpur in recognition of his services to sports now the other two important personalities who have been awarded in and he has become the second person to receive this honor after prakash padukone so the first person to receive this honor earlier is prakash padukone and in the year 2019 pulela gopichand has been awarded with this honorary doctorate now the other two most important personalities who have been awarded with this honorary doctorate are sudha murthy and tessie thomas sudha murthy is the chairperson of infosys so the other woman who has been awarded is tessie thomas and she is also called the missile women of india now why is she been given this title of missile women of india so she has been given this title because she is the first indian women to head a missile project in india and which missile project is she leading so she is leading the missile project of agni 4 which is being developed by drdo that is defense research development organization so she is the director of this agni 4 missile project so quite interesting fact right and now let us move on to the next question that is where will the davis cup be held so there are five options china south africa thailand india and pakistan so out of these five options it is option e that is pakistan which is going to host the davis cup so now another important fact about davis cup is that Davis Cup is related to the sport of tennis and this cup is organized by International Tennis Federation ITF and this year it is going to be organized in Pakistan and another interesting fact is that India will be uh, playing a tie with Pakistan in Pakistan itself after a gap of 55 years and now let us move on to the last question of today that is where does the YAI multi class ranking sailing championship take place so basically this YAI multi class sailing championship is an annual event which takes place on Hussain Sagar lake so this sailing event is organized by yachting association of india that is yai and the aim of this sailing championship is to bring india into the world sailing map basically to promote this sport of sailing in india that is why this annual event or this annual championship is held so now the question for you is that where is this championship held do mention your answers in this comment section below so thank you so much guys for watching our video and if you have liked the video so do not forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for all the latest notification and also you can provide your feedback and in case you have any queries you can also ask them in the comment section below or you can also call us at this number or send us your query through mail on this email id and we will resolve it personally by contacting you so thank you so much for watching our video and do not forget to subscribe to our channel